Alright everyone, it is me, Johnson Chan, and I forgot to plug the mic in, but it actually sounds pretty much the same, given the uh, settings on OBS or whatever, so I'm just going to be too lazy to open it. Also, I kind of realize I'm now wearing the same orange shirt as I did yesterday, so um, I don't know, I guess that means I should actually clean the shirt. I mean, it still smells pretty clean, so, because um, I really want to clean this. This is my... Uh, little sleeping headband so the problem is i have to like you know carefully pull out the electronic part of it because obviously you can't soak that in water so uh yeah i don't know maybe i'll just keep the shirt on it doesn't matter see it would be nice to have a girlfriend or a wife that she could simply clean the clothes for me all right well, on top of that i also probably be living in a house in tampa florida so we'll probably have like, a washing machine so yeah it actually wouldn't be that bad i just throw the, throw the clothes in and just do like a quick uh quick wash or something nothing too crazy so uh, anyway we're up to what are we up to cloud world number 341 and uh yeah i mean uh, things have been slowing down on youtube uh funny enough but well i mean the censorship's really ramping up but i don't think it's censorship though so i, I don't know uh, there's just something something off with youtube um but, uh, yeah. Well, also, it's a slow news cycle, too. So maybe, like, because I always try to title it something interesting based on what news I wind up for that day, right? So sometimes it has good searches, sometimes it doesn't. So, uh, yeah. But I'm still thinking about, because so, I've been listening to more Jesse Lee Peterson pretty much every day, because there's a lot of good suggested videos on YouTube. So I just go, just, I put it in my Chrome tab, and I put it in some kind of order, and I just listen to it when I wake up. And, uh, yeah, he actually went over a lot of stuff to him. Still processing it, but I think one thing he said was, be careful for what you ask God for, because he will give it to you if you have no doubt. Uh, but the problem is, you got to be careful, because God will be like, all right, I'll give you courage. And then you have courage, and then all of a sudden, you can't handle uh, all that awesome power, right? You know, Jesse himself said he asked for a wife, and he couldn't handle the women. <laughs> so he's like, you know what? I'll just, I'll, I'll just, uh, just let your will be done, right? Let me have a wife. Great. If not, great. <laughs> right? So you know, in my case, I know myself. You know, so I mean, that's what I always love doing. So what I would ask for is, well, I kind of know I'm not ready for it. So you know, I just won't ask for anything. You know, I'll ask for something else, right? You know, so in my case, I do ask pretty much for what I want. One time I wanted to view the future so I could try to predict, uh, I guess, Forex or some, something in the markets, right? Or I just wanted, in general, just predict the future. It's like, hey, what could go wrong, right? And then every night for like the next two, three nights, I would have nightmares and I had a hard time sleeping because it was a nightmare. But the problem is, the night I had a nightmare, the next morning, when I finally wake up, I check the news, you know, at the time on the internet, I was like, Hey, I drew, I had a nightmare exactly about that thing, all right? And then I and then there was one nightmare where I had like vampires at night. They were like sucking the blood of everyone. And it was like really scary. And then the next morning, I read how there was uh, there was some African village that said they had a they had a vampire problem. And I was like, what the hell? And it turns out that there were actually blood suckers that were like going around kidnapping and draining blood from like all the like poor african people because obviously it's a village so they can't defend themselves i was like okay you know what i don't care i don't give a shit anymore i don't want to predict the future anymore fuck it <laughs> you know it's like also I, it's not, it doesn't seem to be working for the markets anyway so i have all this downside risk but no upside so i was like you know what i'll, I'll pass and then i stopped having nightmares right after just like that that <laughs> i actually had a good night's sleep <laughs> you know at the time i wasn't really that strong with god i think Actually, maybe I was. I don't know. It's like, it's so blurry. I mean, a lot can happen in 10 years, right? But I, I specifically remember that same memory because that was the moment. I read that vampire shit, then the next morning, I was like, okay, you know what? This is too much. <laughs> so, yeah. So, so now, so, you know, now that I'm, let's see, 37, right? You know, obviously I'm a lot more experienced. So I, I know, I know exactly what I need. Uh, or I was pretty close to that. So, uh, yeah. Uh, and interestingly enough, um, you know, I was like, you know, I really don't want to use Tinder. There's got to be something I can use online. And then, um, you know, I was browsing the Roosh V forums because now that, you know, Roosh is becoming a lot more Christian, right? You know, he's removed all like the fornicating and game stuff, right, on his forums. He actually, uh, this was like maybe a month ago, I guess now, a few weeks ago, probably a month. I don't know. It's, it's a, a lot happens, at least for, for me, because I always try to keep busy. And, uh, yeah, they, someone mentioned uh, Hinge, 
where basically it's actually a relationship focused uh, dating app. And it's actually pretty good. A lot of people actually seem to really like it. And then the, the model for Hinge is like, we hope that you uninstall our app because you found you found the one person you want, always wanted. So I'm actually kind of curious to see how that works. Of course, I could already feel say it's like, yeah, you should use it to fornicate with all these hot, you know, busty white girls too. And it's like, it's like, damn, that's actually, <laughs> that's actually a somewhat hard temptation to resist. But uh, yeah, but I mean, I know I'm, not, I'm still technically not ready for a relationship yet. So that's why I still have held off. But I made sure to follow them on Twitter because, you know, that way I can remember them. So, and then there's other stuff too, but now I can't remember because now I got to do this video. So, uh, but it's good stuff, good stuff. And I'm, you know, moving along pretty well in the Battle Royale course. You know, I'm already like, let's see, where are we up to? What does it say? Back everyone. All right, that's the guy's voice. In this lesson, we're going to be setting up the game manager script. This is going to be the general managing of the players, and actually, we're going to be use what we're going to be doing in this lesson is spawning in the players when they join the game scene. Back ever. Okay, yeah. I mean, obviously, it's on Chrome because I don't really want to show this on screen. Uh, cause Chrome has all my actual login and where whatever personal shit. Let's see, it says lesson seventeen of thirty-one. Spawning in the players part one. It's like an eight minute 52 second video. So yeah, it's actually pretty nice It's actually pretty nice a lot of scripting. I mean, it looks like a lot of the, so like a lot of the coding for a game really is just just you know Just scripting. It's actually like the it's actually not that big or hard uh, What makes it hard is figure out how to tell all the scripts to work together and not have a bug but luckily we have unity and uh, you know uh, Microsoft Playfab and what, who are the other guys? Oh yeah, Photon, which is owned by Unity. They already did the vast majority of all the multiplayer uh, coding. So I'm actually kind of surprised more game programmers don't create multiplayer games because multiplayer games is where the money's at, right? Though you could make some good single player games. I know I have one, right? But I'm still finding myself playing Tarkov, especially now that I've actually figured out. Actually, let me show you. Uh, escape from Tarkov Reserve. Base back. Yeah, I'm really liking their new hatchling change where those scabs hunt you down. It's like, I actually like it because there's a quick trip back to the menu, right? And I already got all the loot, right? Which is like, like they, like they can't stop us. I <laughs> like they can't stop us, right? We're going to play the game the way it was not intended to, right? And that, that's too bad, right? At, at least until like, you know, Nikita and the devs. Uh, uh, yeah, there's like so many of these maps. Uh, actually, I like the, is this one? Yeah, this one's all right. This one's better. There are so many maps. Um, I mean, I, I, I mean what you call it? They're, they're like until like Nikita like spurgs out so much that they'll actually just start outright banning this kind of playstyle, and then they'll just make the same mistake as every other game developer force a playstyle. So I actually am curious to see how it's gonna how that's gonna wind up working. I, mean, I might still play it. But I may, I mean, depending on how how uh, how hardcore they go, like you know, because I want to see if they become like EverQuest developers, you know, arrogant and very egotistical. Like my way is the right way. Like screw the customer, right? In a way, I'm gonna be doing the same thing. But that's because I have a vision that you know uh, that has to be pretty casual, right? I can probably get away with it because you know this type of game does not exist in the market. Right here in this case, it's gonna be more like, well, we just don't like what you're doing. You know, it's like, oh, you know, <laughs> so it's like a different intention. Uh, but I still have to be pretty careful, right? Because I still have to make sure I listen to people. I go, okay, this might actually be pretty solid. Like, for example, I'm gonna have an auction house, and people will complain about it. It's like, well, you should, you should not have an auction house because you know, it ruins the blah 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 blah. It's like, well, okay, that's a socialist or communist complaining. I don't want them, right? So there, in fact, there in that case, I can ignore them safely, right? But they say, hey, this thing is kind of annoying. Can you change it so that like it's a better quality of life change? Like, oh, okay, that's actually a good idea. So you know, it's uh, that, that's how I have to look at it. Right? I want my game to be easy, accessible, and then eventually you'll make money, you know, on the real money mar uh, marketplace. And then we'll have to get some sort of regulation, probably, right? Because if you make more than six hundred bucks in America, I uh, you have to risk. I forgot what it's called, but I think it's a W two or something. Like you have to be given that so that you can report your income to the IRS. And you can bet that people are gonna like you know be up on my ass about it because you know I'm not even sure how long I can even mention Nick Fuentes uh, on my Twitter line. Oh, which is the other thing too. He finally got permit banned on YouTube. So 
Uh, but he's going strong. In fact, a lot of people donated money to him on his D-Live last night. So, uh, you know, I think he'll be all right for now. So, um, and Charlie Kirk started up his tour at the end of this month. So, uh, Gripper Wars Part 2. Like, they think they could censor us off the internet? No. They're go they've gone against God. So, um, that's what's, uh, that's what's happened. Uh, oh yeah, so anyway, you can see the map here. So I've been playing this map and I'm still kind of learning it, but it's actually a surprisingly simple map. So the next step eventually will be for me to go into each of these uh, buildings that are marked with a, a chess piece. That's why it's called Black Bishop, White Bishop Building, the White Queen Building, etc. So, um, yeah. And of course, some people are assholes, so they just gunned me down even though I'm defenseless because they don't like hatchlings either, so... Uh, so the, so, so the recipe is ripe for, uh, the Battle State Games people, the guys who make Escape from Tarkov, to be, uh, to be making the same mistake that EverQuest devs did. And I really am curious to see if they'll ever actually, you know, fall into that, all right? So we'll see, all right? We'll see. Uh, but like I said, but he did say, it does say, like, we want a hardcore MMO, uh, RPG that's an FPS so I mean they're also being pretty clear about their intentions all right well you know don't blame me or well I know they'll probably try to sue me at some point um, you know once my game becomes like the world of Warcraft of the genre or whatever right because because the market really wants a good MMO RPG but it's hard to design one right that's why they have so many World of Warcraft clones and it's just boring But I know what works, right? And I'm not Blizzard Entertainment, right? I know where they failed, right? Just give people what they want, which is they want the instant gratification, they want the dopamine hit, but they also want enough of a challenge so that the dopamine hit actually means something, right? If you just keep handing shit to people for free like they do in World of Warcraft, eh, it gets kind of boring, right? Oh, and then you also have to make the multiplayer part very easy and accessible. You just click a button and then you just queue, you queue and then you get into the game and it's fun, right? That's actually where the vast majority of it comes from. And you got to make it casual friendly enough so people want to keep requeuing, right? You know, we don't want a situation like in yesterday's Battle Royale game where it's like, why am I playing this? It's like I always keep spawning with no, you know, freaking weapons and it like pisses me off. Well, it doesn't piss me off, but it's like, okay, this is just stupid, you know? Uh, and of course, the reward has to be good, uh, or specifically exclusive, so that yeah, there's an actual reason for you to queue, right? So that people, because like in Albion, nobody queues for Arena, right? I assume it's because there's no reward in it, right? Or it's very bad, so it's like, why bother? So I've got to make sure that I don't have that problem, and we won't. That's why mine's going to be an actual well-designed game. Anyway, uh, Bitcoin searches for this week is looks like it's going to be finalizing at 13. Um, of course, it's subject to change. Uh, Bitcoin dominance is... I'm going to have to refresh this again. Okay. Bitcoin dominance is at 61%, so it's actually gone down a little bit still. 24-hour volume is uh, cooled off a little, but still pretty high at 150.6 billion. Uh, Bitcoin itself, 10223 bucks. So, so far, it looks like across the board, everything looks to be uh, continuing to flatline. Mm, excuse me, gotta make sure I burp so I don't get hiccups. And uh, yeah, uh, it's the weekend. Today is Saturday. So, uh, yeah, pretty good, pretty good. All right. Yeah, I'll take a flatline. All right. As long as it doesn't go down like a crazy amount, that's all we care about. All right. Litecoin's 80, it's basically $80.94, right? So, 81 bucks essentially. Uh, these things are cooling off to the Bitcoin copycats. Dougie coin 320 382.4 million. So this thing's also flatlining pretty nicely. Where is Steam? <clears throat> oh yeah, so the flatline thing I think would be an exception during a downturn in a or a bear market. Right? It's because it goes down, then it stops, like it flatlines, then it goes down again. So it's actually kind of like the same, it's actually the same thing, but in reverse. But it's a lot harder to tell because you don't know when a bear market uh, actually has hit until it's too late. Because that's one way of looking at it, but the other way is, hey, it's just a correction. It's going back up. So, you know, it, can, it, it, it begins to become uh, difficult. So that's usually why I look for something called a double top in technical analysis, right, where it just looks like a mountain, right? Sure, I'll, show, I'll show you. Double top chart pattern. But the problem with this is it also doesn't work yeah so here's a good example of it right this is a double top and then it goes all the way down but here's the problem like 
you look at this and then it just goes straight back up again or you know it's like it's almost impossible to predict so it's like huh. that's why eventually that's why i like the bitcoin mining so much right because i don't have to worry about that all i have to do is you know i'm getting a feeling that it's probably a little too high now so i better just whatever crypto i get just immediately convert it to cash so that by the time you find out that you were too late to find out about the bear market, right? I'm putting in quotes in case you're just listening to my video and not watching. Uh, then you don't really care as much because you're like, oh yeah, you know, I've been selling all my fiat anyway. So you actually get the benefit of the crash, right? You know, the only thing you don't get the benefit of is shorting the market, which is the next step that I'm, you know, look, hoping and looking to see. Because back then you couldn't short the market, not really. Uh, and Bitfinex started like banning all Americans or actually just banning a lot of people, right, because of regulations. Well, now we have Ledger X, so now we actually have a chance to uh, short the markets. So it'll be a nice first time thing for me to do for the first time. Uh, oh yeah, so where is Steam? Steam. Uh, oh, so here we go. Oh, it's nice to see it's doing pretty well. All right, so 28.32 cents. So not only going up, but it's also flatlining upwards. So that's perfect. So Steam is going to finally recover, it looks like. So we're pretty Tamaguchi there. Uh, Bitcoin grayscale is up a little bit. Uh, that doesn't even make any much sense, but fine, whatever. Uh, so Crex finally got back to me, and JMC coin is now up and running. So hopefully uh, we should see some buy and sell. Yep, I already see it. I also set myself a small test deposit on Crex just to make sure uh, that it's working. So it probably is because they took away the message. So it's probably pretty good. So anyway, uh, JMC is at three to four. Uh, now that, you know, we can finally start buying and selling on Crex, uh, you know, it's got a lot of catch up to do. Uh, 404 continues to get hammered. I mean, at this point, I guess the supply is now considered too big now. So I guess it's only going to be a matter of time before it crashes to one. But I am not going to, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, reduce the uh, sub-Satoshi count on this for a while. I'm just going to force the market for a little bit to, uh, you know, you know, cool its asshole jets down for a little bit, right? I told you know we're gonna make the we're gonna make the asshole stupid. And I, can't, I gotta be careful of the YouTube stupid community guidelines, especially now that they took out Nick Fuentes so mercilessly. Um, we're gonna wait for the idiot uh, dumpers to start sweating a little bit, right? So if they want to ruin the coin, then so be it, right? You know, I mean, because still gonna be a while, right? Even if I get a prototype of the game out, and it's gonna probably just include, it's just gonna have the battle royale portion. Uh, you know, the MMO RPG part of it isn't really, it's, that might take some time. I don't know. Like, I'll, I'll see because, like, the end of the course is using Azure PlayFab. So that's what I actually have to use in order to uh, do the uh, RPG part. The other issue is people cannot do uh, trades. So it'll be interesting, too, because, like, I got, it's going to be annoying because... There's no option house function, and it does look like it would be a little hard. It will actually be kind of hard to program it, though I can do it. Microsoft Azure is working on uh, the, the auction house function. So it's like, well, if I develop my own thing, it's going to conflict with the, as, the Microsoft Azure one. So it's like, what do I do? So I have to, in the, in the meantime, I have to basically allow people to trade, but it's going to be a full PvP uh situation so i mean <laughs> but i mean people will be able to have a secure uh container like they have in tarkov i have to call it something else so i'll probably call it like i don't know a bio pouch or something right because it because in my universe everybody is jacked up on combat implants and nano machines so like we're basically cyborgs but it's less cyborgs and still more like you know a bio computer enhanced uh humans all right because you're still like 99 percent human all right you know um I, I almost mentioned the 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 awesome the awesome uh brand name because i couldn't use the word jedi obviously but i had to modify my term and i had to keep it short and set make it sound cool and i did come up with the perfect one so that's why i have the domains for it you know the dot game the dot show the dot movie you know i think i i have the copyright too if i can start saying it so it will be like, wow, that's actually a cool name. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So I, I'll probably just, like, I'll definitely enable trade and then just let people uh, take the risk. I'll be like, all right, well, you know, that's that. All right. You know, because like you could trade 
and then before the before you know the guy has a chance to put it into his secure area or maybe i'll make it so that it goes directly into the secure area actually when you do a trade uh actually no hmm, i don't know i have to think about it i mean that would be the better ideal right you know do can actually yeah maybe that's how it should work you can have items in your trade all right that also act as the container and then when you do a trade it goes from no but then what if your trade but then the thing is the container won't have certain items so actually yeah actually you know what i will just have the restrictions and then if people want to trade the uh, the restricted items they're gonna have to take the uh, trade risk that's what i would do all right yeah i'll do that. i'll just do that and just tell people up front and it's like you want to take the risk then you know then so be it you know you can't complain to us or whatever and that's gonna be a, kind of a hard too because what if you pay real money eventually for the item and then someone just kills you and loots it and then now you're really angry about it yeah that's gonna actually cause possible um well, see, that's the thing, right? Why would that be a legal problem, right? Because it's like, you know the risk, you were told up front, and it's constantly spam. And my, obviously, I'll have a lawyer drop a draft. Actually, I might have to seek the lawyer that does Blizzard shit and then get hit, who did the auction house specifically for Blizzard. And then have that same TOS. It's like, yeah, well, you know, it's, uh, you know, you're, you're screwed kind of thing. Hmm. Yeah, I'll have to think about that. Anyway, 404 continues to get hammered. Um, it's at six to seven. I mean, at this point, the dumpers are in full control, and the supply for 404 is actually growing a pretty insane amount now. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Hey, Mitch is trying to monetize the site a little bit, so that's what's a little off. Uh, it's four point. Yeah, it's four point three two nine billion. So, great. I got disconnected from here. 4.329 billion so 44 is just going kind of nutty um but it's kind of annoying because it used to be 29 or 30 and then somehow it just deserves to lose 99 percent of its value or 75 or it's like you know this is such bullshit but i mean again the problem is you know supply is starting to enter the 808 coin type inflation phase and there's no use case out here, right? Because, you know, my game's not out. And even if it is out, you know, there's going to be bugs, which, I, which I'm proud to say is I don't get frustrated or angry anymore. It's like, okay, I know it's a bug. There's a simple reason. We're going nice and slow. And then, you know, I keep playing around with it until I, you know, I still get that little, like, you know, that, that instant trigger to, like, want to fly into a rage. But I'm like, no, that's, don't do that's bad. All right? So I'm, I'm getting better at it. And then, yeah, I fixed the bug, all right? It's like, oh, okay. It's just consider this a learning opportunity. Just like when I used to learn how to build computers, you know, I'm good at that and troubleshooting them because I had to deal with so many of those problems, right? Back then, though, as a kid, I always get mad, right? But then I stuck with it, you know. I'm glad I did. So yeah, so uh, it's gonna be a while before we can save the coin. Even then, I'll probably implement. Then I have to implement coin payments. I'm not even gonna have. And then, and then if that makes enough money, if it does, if people actually buy the microtransaction, right? And they probably will. Right, and that's going to require more coding, right? The because I have to create the content to make people want to buy the microtransaction for it. Then I can see, oh, okay, you know, we're making a thousand dollars a month in, you know, Monero or Litecoin total, right? It's like, oh, okay, that's not enough, right? Oh, and then maybe a couple months it'll be like five thousand. It's like, oh, okay, maybe I should start actually. Um, now I actually can pay the ten thousand euro fee, and the and the game generates five thousand dollars a month worth of crypto transactions so that means you know you know say it'll probably be jmc coin for example it's like oh okay so people will probably buy the jmc coin uh and you know maybe that you know it's like a thousand dollars a month but that's good that means jmc coin now has a thousand dollars a month in extra trade value so that's how i have to look at it you know i put that finance and economics you know that's actually like the one useful thing i can clearly say that i learned from college right you know, and it actually is going to, you know, basically, I guess, make us a lot of money. Oh, well, it certainly has made me a lot of money uh, eventually. Uh, two by two coin remains solid. So I think a lot of people uh, that are just unhappy with the 404 coin price is now moving into two by two. And the supply is pretty low, too. So, you know, two by two will be pretty good. Uh, 71 to 73. So uh, it's going to be very solid. Uh Compound coin is uh, doing pretty surprisingly pretty well. It's at 5,100 Satoshis of dog coin to 5,800 
uh, Satoshi. Some of it actually goes up to 7,400. So apparently there was a lot of buying uh, yesterday too. Um, showing top 20. Let me see. Either I missed it. No, I mentioned it yesterday. So why is this? Oh, yeah. So there's actually nothing here in the trade history that indicates that it went that high. Yeah, it went up as high as 6,000. Oh, okay. So people are actually buying up to 6K, but they're not paying any more than that. But either way, compound coins getting uh, stronger. So works for me. Works for me. For some reason, Mitch doesn't like compound coins. He thinks the coin's going to die. But our coin's much more likely to die. All right, and I've already explained to him the reason is because we have a strong, we have a higher APR, right? So anyway, I've done a lot of rambling today, so we're probably just gonna just look at some articles. Uh, we're just gonna read the headlines. Um, Bitcoin halving, we already know that. Uh, nope. Uh, should you buy Bitcoin Friday and sell on Mondays? Funny enough, uh, this might be actually an okay thing. Uh, I'm not going to read it though because I don't want people to be encouraged to become traders, right? Because, you know, I don't want people to start gambling like they're like people want to do with Bitcoin Cash and SV. So I'm not going to do that because you should not be gambling. Uh, Ethereum just broke critical resistance, making a massive of it. Okay. Uh, okay, well, let me tell you. Oh, China investment firm makes stark Bitcoin warning. Uh, all coins are racing past Bitcoin, blah, 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 blah. Oh, that's interesting. If you bought, buying $1,000 of Bitcoin at 2018 bottom would have made you this rich. Uh, one, two, it's like 250%. Because because you bought it at $3,000 for Bitcoin or 2,600. Actually, you, actually, you bought it at 2,600. You would have made almost 400% already. Wow, that's actually pretty nice. <laughs> Uh, Cardano, yeah, but that's the thing, you can't predict, uh, the bear market until it's clearly obvious that it's been complete, like, I used to, what's nice about Bitcoin is it drops so much and it stays so low that you clearly understand that it's a bear market. And then it gets correlated over here on Google search trends, like, oh yeah, everyone's, you know, like, angry. All right, here's all the normies who realize like we missed the boat, we missed the boat, we got we gotta hang in there. And then and then they and, and then the and then the idiots, you know, they're like, you know what? Fuck Bitcoin. And then, you know, for two years nothing happens, right? And that's when you actually move in. I gotta say, you know, it was a pretty tough period, right? You know, you know, it's like, you know, I'm not getting much money, and then AO, the eight oh eight coin betrayed me, the community, and it's like, you know, all that crap, but you know, that's just how it goes, right? You know, because I have an advantage over everyone else, right? Getting stronger with Christianity and God. And number two, I actually know what I'm talking about, right? You know, and I'm 37. So I, I've seen it all. I've seen it all. And I'm still, but I'm still young enough to actually do something about it. So, you know, because again, you know, at the end of my life, you know, I'll see the man I could have been. And I want to make sure that what I could have been isn't that much different from how I actually led my life. Right. So it's like, you know what? I only get to live once. And apparently reincarnation doesn't seem to work, <laughs> uh, happen. At least not for us Christians in the in, in the Buddhist sense. You you I guess you technically reincarnate, quote unquote, but you're going to the afterlife, you know, you're not coming back to to Earth <laughs> or the galaxy if we develop our space travel better. Right. You know, that that's gonna be up to Virgin Atlantic and uh, Elon Musk. Cardano Creator says real world blockchain apps are limitless. Um, donates 500k in crypto ADA for research uh, are limitless. I mean, people were saying the same thing about the internet, which is technically true. So, hmm. All right, I might actually want to read this real quick. Uh, actually, I kind of like this thumbnail like too. Real world applications for blockchain are limitless, and our donation, uh, blah blah blah, to Wyoming Blockchain Research Lab. Okay, so oh yeah, Wyoming's taking the lead on this. I remember doing the Bitcoin video on this. But the problem is, it's on. It's it's uh, it might have been deleted on my bit shoot, unfortunately. Um, at the forefront of blockchain legislation, Wyoming has developed a legal framework that supports the emerging technology. Yeah, so that's basically what their Wyoming is doing. So if I actually create, so maybe, I don't know, maybe I'll have to create a Wyoming LLC since we're doing cryptocurrency stuff eventually. 
Ripple becomes second largest fintech firm in America, sold half a billion XRP to fund crypto startups. So that's good. Cardinalis says Ethereum based altcoin could go parabolic. Okay, that's just technical analysis predictions. Uh, okay, so a $200 million crypto venture fund reportedly takes off. Now, so that's a good amount of uh, thing they jig. Crypto liftoff. Justin Sun announces Neutron's team at partnership. It pushed you for whoa steam it wait oh shit no wonder steam's going up tron is partnering with steam oh this is fantastic well thank you god uh tron foundation is expanding its ecosystem today with a new partnership with steam the largest decentralized blockchain social media blog planner steam will begin its migration to the tron network and a tron space of users and platform that includes strategic partnerships the Polonix Opera D Live and Samsung. Oh yes. Now that Nick Fuentes is completely banned, D Live is going to be very important for the time being. Uh, but the, he, Nick did say he has his own streaming exclusive uh, platform option or something. He's going to reveal on Monday. So I'm curious to see what that is. Tron ecosystem live sharing world's largest blockchain. Blah blah. blah. Um, wait. Hosting PewDiePie begins migration to Tron. Wait, Tron? Oh, so Tron took PewDiePie's live streaming. Tech Giant Santa now supports Tron, TRX, and blockchain. Da, 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 da. I mean, here's the thing, though. Like, um, well, House of Censorship, that's kind of like the thing. Oh, excuse me. I mean, censorship's still a problem. Because one of the reasons why I still don't like Steam uh, in terms of censorship is because. The blockchain itself is, doesn't have censorship, but the, you have to use the applications to access it. Well, they can just ban you, right? So you can't really tell the truth there uh, either, ultimately. So that's actually kind of reason why I'm actually looking forward more to BitChute's live streaming service. Because that thing is truly decentralized, so there's nothing you can do. And then at that point, obviously, I'll be a pretty good programmer. So it probably won't be too hard for me to figure out how to program something. Uh, to create basically a simple applet that'll just take, you know, cryptocurrency uh, donations or something. In fact, I may not even have to invent it. I think there's something called Entropy. Entropy uh, Stream Donation. I think that. Okay, here we go. Create streaming solutions in an era of mass censorship. Building your enhanced live interaction enable free discussion and help you monetize your content. So these guys are specifically designed. Yeah, okay, so I don't have to program shit. I'll just, I'll just implement entropy in a bit shoot. Um, uh, Flying your channel, man. You pay, you pay us to make good software, not tell you what or any lower payment. Probably. Twitch takes 50%. We probably our premium fee will never exceed 50%. The rest is free. No platform fees, no paywall is free. Oh, so Entropy is a full Streamlabs type solution. Then uh, let's take your money. Uh, so I mean, these guys are still kind of centralized, but I mean, they were willing to take. I mean, this is what. Um, yeah, this is what uh, Nick Fuentes uses. I'm not sure if he's still using it because he kept mentioning Entropy and then he stopped and then he said he had someone else create a applet for him or something. Um. I don't know. All right, so I'll just use this with Bitchu, and then I don't have to worry about censorship. But of course, I'll still have to stay clean for the time being, right? At least until uh, the Nick Fuentes people and the Groyper uprising, you know, uh, takes significant uh, chunks out of uh, you know the fake right and conservative ink. So that's what we'll be looking for. Uh, they have the wall, the smartphone, the web browser, and the file sharing. With the integration of Steam, it which powers. A Stack of blockchain based social media platforms, including YouTube and DTube, Instagram, alternative app picks, and fitness dap. Trans Network is poised to gain over 1 million users. All Steam tokens will now be converted to new Trod based Steam tokens. Uh, okay. Uh, Steam 2.0. Okay, we're going to actually retweet this. Um, I imagine this video must be like, um, uh, I have to. Can I even say this picture looks a little gay? Yeah, I, I probably could probably say that. Yeah, I, I think he actually might be. Uh, it's like I would. He does. He's gotta look more manly than this. Also, he's Asian. That's the other thing too. It's like I mean, come on. Everyone already thinks we're kind of wimpy people. I don't like that. Tron's nearly in a new era. Decentralized social network. Join me on D Live. 
Well, let's talk about Steam dApps, migration, Steam token swap given to TRX users and a new accelerant program. Uh, so what does that, I don't know, I'm reading this. It's like, so does my Steam become Tron now? Well, Ethereum remains the largest ecosystem for dApps that leverage smart contracts, driving the majority of the DeFi movement. Tron has carved out its niche as the second largest ecosystem through a mix of gaming, gambling, and social media apps. So your partnership will upsell use of crypto, a new accelerator program, and giveaways to, hold, to users who hold Tron's native cryptocurrency, TRX. So here's the original concern of our forum, meaning crypto, and high power distribution, blah, blah, blah. Um, Okay, so I need to know, does my Steam become... I don't know, it's not actually clear. Steam Tron. Anyways, I really wanted to end this, but this is actually kind of important. Uh, Steam to ship its proprietary blockchain and token to Tron Network. Um, Hmm. I don't like Coindesk. Coin Telegraph? Uh, I just want to know what's going to happen with my Steam. Um, all right, Steam and Old Token seem to move to the Tron blockchain too. Uh, uh, with the firm to move Steam and other Steam and adapts to the Tron blockchain, and an announced for share of the Part of includes the shift of Old Steam Token to a new Steam Token based on the Tron. Surge over 26% over ATR, so they should have trading 10% higher than TNN. Additionally, the collaboration will enable new gateways. Okay. Providing a rather like a like service, dApps. Okay, we don't care about that. News follows a report bug in Steam on report for Bray. In fact, apparently, it's just a bug in the bottom. It's on the holding network for at least two days. Okay. Uh, okay, and then we have Tron's founder working with. Warren Buffett, I think I already have them on YouTube, so that's good. Uh, Dlease.io. Uh, I don't see anything. I don't see any mention of this. I don't know. They said it's. Let's see. Uh, uh, so they're gonna move. So it doesn't say anything about converting. It just says move. So. I think what happens is I, I'll still be able to keep my Steam and I'll keep working the way it is, but it'll just simply be operating on the Tron network instead of the Steam blockchain. Oh, okay, so I don't have to worry about anything then, I think. I guess we'll have to keep an eye on it. Um, I did like that one. Oh, this one's a pretty nice one, too. Uh, but I think we're going to have to use this one for a thumbnail. So if you like what you saw, read or heard, hit the like button, the follow button, or subscribe button from wherever you're watching this from. Or my YouTubes at youtube.com forward slash uh, the Lemon Factor BTC. Smash that subscribe button on the right hand side of this page because uh, you're going to get rich if you do it. If not, well, oh, that's the other thing too. Never remember. Jesse Lee Pearson said, uh, no, uh, God doesn't force anything on you. Well, I'm not going to either, right? You want to ignore uh, the truth and money? All right, well, you're gonna, you are gonna can go suffer then, you know, not not my problem. All right, I mean, because you, you chose, you know, you, you chose poorly. So, you know, because I'm going to get rich. My family's probably going to make off like bandits, right? You know, people who actually listen to me will make off like bandits, provided, of course, that they hold, buy, mine, and, you know, keep hoarding crypto, all right, until that nice little day that we're going to dump everything. And that's our payday, all right? And then we'll go for payday number two when the market uh, gets short. Uh, oh, well, we're going to start shorting the market on LedgerX.com, most likely. And then, uh, yeah, you know, we'll make just as much money, if not twice or thrice the money, right? Because if, let's say, you make $5 million on the way up, well, you know, you get ready to make 10 to $15 million on the way down, right? And it's going to be very fast because bear markets always occur very quickly, right? Because uh, look, it went, because the bull market peaked. And then the bear market itself actually only took like, a, let's see, what's March 3rd? It only took like three months for it to lose 70, 80% of its value. And then after that, everyone just like, yeah, screw this. So, you know, probably around April or definitely by May, I'll clearly look at the charts and I'll probably go, you know, if it was going to go up, it would have gone up by now. So I can clear my shorts. Uh, and then we pr take profit on our shorts here. And then we'll let the idiot bears who think Bitcoin's going to go to zero like Tony Bay's. And then the years will drag on, but we already exited well before then. All right. So it's all it's always a matter of buy before the suckers get in and then sell and continue to sell uh, when the suckers want to get out. 
right? And then you just take all their money because they're stupid and they're impatient, right? And that also includes uh, rich people too, because they're probably just as stupid too, right? But they're better than the normies over here, right? But they probably still lose a lot of money too. So I'm happy to take the billionaire's money, right? Because they're already like fucking America up the ass without their consent, uh, without her consent. So. You know, as far as I'm concerned, I'm doing God's work at that point, you know. <laughs> and we're going to get pretty rich doing it, too. So, you know, no, no skin off my back. All right. Enjoy the rest of your day or night. I will see you all in tomorrow's video. And, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Judson Chan, JMC Coin, 404 Coin. And I really like the other uh, thumbnails, but uh, this is going to be about Tron. So I guess we'll uh, just use this one.